Good evening. At this time, I will call the Cascade Charter Township Planning Commission to order for meeting to order for Monday, July 12, 2021. Uh, all members are currently present with the exception of member Merlin, who we are expecting to arrive momentarily. Um, with that, we will move on to the Pledge of Allegiance, Article 2. Stand, please. <clears throat> Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And with that, I'd move on to Article 3, which is to approve the current agenda. If, uh, um, yes. Uh, there was, uh, I think you wanted to put this in there. Uh, we, we have that in there. That's, That's in there. under old business, the very last item, okay. rules of conduct. Yep, thank it, you. It's there. Anyone else have any thoughts on the agenda? I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you, Member Deering. I would support. Thank you, Member Katzma. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Get to move along without any curveballs. Uh, Article four is to disclose any conflicts of interest. Does anyone have anything they wish to disclose at this time? I don't something along the way just to speak up. Article five, approve the minutes of the June 21st, 2021 meeting. Uh, Member Katzman would move to approve. Or Thank you, Member Katzma for, uh, for the motion and Member Nordic for the support. All those in favor of approving the minutes say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, moving right along. Um, at this time, we would acknowledge any visitors that wish to speak. Uh, I would like to mention that we have two items tonight that are in front of us that will each have their own public hearing. So if you have uh, the desire to speak about either of those items, one is Timber Bluff and one is uh, the township actually making the application about outdoor temporary uses. If, if you wish to speak on either of those items, uh, we will have a separate time specifically for those topics. But if there's something else uh, that you wish to speak on, now would be a great time to step up to the microphone and, and do that. And if you're joining us online uh, via Zoom, you can dial, I believe it's star nine on the telephone to connect that way or raise your hand electronically and we'll try to get connected to you. I'm glad everybody did rush up at once. Um, <laughs> Assistant Manager Fast, do we have anyone online this evening? There are no raised hands, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. With that, uh, we would move on to Article 7, which is case number 213644, Thorn Apple Pines LLC. This is the property address 7650 Timber Bluff. And uh, when we get to the point of public hearing, I will let all of you know if you wish to comment. Brian, what do we what do we have thus far? Yeah, so you'll notice that the staff report here is from Director Peterson, as are the other items on our agenda here tonight. Um, unfortunately, I got a note from him this morning saying he's not feeling well enough to be able to attend tonight, so I'll be pinch hitting for him. So I'll introduce our items and then do my best to answer questions that anyone has. So uh, please bear with me if I'm kind of going down item by item here in the staff report, just to make sure I'm not missing anything. So our first thing on the agenda um, is an application requesting an exemption from the private street regulations for Timber Bluff Drive in order to allow 7650 Timber Bluff Drive to be added in the private street for access. So Timber Bluff um, is a private street that was created in the late 70s. Uh, most of the road meets our private design standards with the exception of the last um, kind of southern portion, about 200 feet or so. So this is coming before us here. It kind of started with a lot split that was done in 1996. At that time, 7670 Timber Bluff, which included both of these parcels here, um, was allowed to split to create a three acre parcel. Um, this was 7670, which is remaining there. And then the remaining property, that southern portion, uh, which is now 7650, was to be combined with an adjacent parcel. 
and therefore did not have access given to it as part of that lot split. Um, because the owner at that time did not complete the combination, 7670 Timber Bluff does not have access to the existing Timber Bluff private um, easement. And so that's why it's in front of us here tonight. I'm requesting that access. So Timber Bluff is considered a non-conforming street for a few reasons. Um, as I mentioned, the deficiencies are mostly on the southern end of it. The road is inspected by, I believe, Director Peterson and uh, Fire Chief Majors. And I found a few deficiencies there listed in your staff report, um, such as width of uh, easement, a lack of turnaround, um, too high of a grade, and a few other things there um, in that mainly southern portion there. So when there's an existing non-conforming private road, um, they're required to be brought up to the current standards when a few different items occur, one of which is one, when one or more lot is added to it, as is the case here, the lot being added to it. Um, so then there are opportunities for design modifications to be requested um, so that the property owners do not have to meet all of the standards. And that's what's being applied for at this time. So the township boards granted um, several exceptions over the years usually with um, while attaching some conditions requiring some improvements to a non-conforming road. And as mentioned in the staff report here, they've had maybe a dozen or so of the requests and Director Peterson only found one case where no improvements were required. And at this time, the applicant's not proposing any improvements. Um, the applicant has indicated that they have no plans to build on or develop the property at this time. Uh, the process for a private road exception is much like our type two special use permit. So we have a public hearing um, here at the plan commission and we'll recommend make a recommendation to the township board for the final decision. So the staff recommend, recommendation there closely follows the memo from the fire chief, which is included in your packets, um, where he does mention that he has some safety concerns for the lot if a home is built on it. And so kind of following that memo, the conditions included are that the applicant provides a recorded deed restriction that requires the property owner to upgrade the road or request another exception before the property can be built on or split and that the deed restriction must be approved by the township prior to it being recorded. And they did have a call um, this morning with the applicant. And during that call, they mentioned that they would, after having the public hearing, they would actually like to um, recommend the decision be tabled. They'd like to have time to actually put together that deed restriction at this time and then bring it back to the planning commission just to have that included when the recommendation is made to the township board. We did have township legal counsel on that call as well, and they didn't see any issue with it being tabled at this time and then being brought back with that private deed restriction. That's all I've got. Anybody have any questions of staff? I do, Mr. Chairman. Um, all right. If we tabled uh, this, uh, this might be a, a procedural question. After the public hearing, would we then have a, another public hearing after the addendum is drafted? Typically, I think it's just the one public hearing required. So we'll take public comment tonight and make note of that. And then in the past, we've often, um, we can let people know, I know there's a homeowners association on Timber Bluff, so we could always kind of do the courtesy of letting them know when it would come back to the agenda. Legally, I don't believe you're required to hold another public hearing. I suppose the I guess commission can maybe choose to if they'd want. Yeah. In the past, I think when, you know, it's something's been tabled like that, we just have the one public hearing to take in comment. We seem to have a lot of the public here. <laughs> I don't know if they're here for this matter or another one. I believe they might be. If it's this one, I, I feel that uh, we should probably have a second public hearing given the general fact that we have a lot of the public sure. here. So, um, okay, I, I think that's up to you, Mr. Chairman, but public. I'm always open to seeing the public attend, so. Yeah. Member Merlin. My apologies for being delayed. I just wanted to note, as I mentioned to you earlier, that I'm recusing myself from this matter to my years with Amway and with the families. Um, so. That's why I thought we hadn't seen you yet. <laughs> I thought you were gonna come in right no, at the end of the conversation. A, it takes a long time for some of us to get ready. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else have any other uh, comments or questions of staff? No? Uh, with that, does the applicant wish to add anything? Thank you, uh, planning commission members, and thank you, Brian. My name is David Smith. I'm an attorney. I represent the applicant, which is Thorn Apple Pines LLC. Katie Donaldson is here, and she also is uh, works with the applicant. Um, the reason this comes up now 
is because there's a private sale in, in the works. And these two lots that we'll talk about tonight are with adjacent acreage are intended to be sold to an individual, not for development. There's no plan for development, no indication of development. But uh, understandingly, the purchaser wants to make sure that the access to both parcels is assured. And, and so that's why we're here. Um, I'll try and identify this a little bit. This parcel, I will call parcel H, and the shaded parcel I'll call parcel I remainder. And it's a remainder because all of this was parcel I, and then it was split off, and this is the remainder. Um, and that's important. Uh, as Brian indicated, there was a split in 1996, and Brian suggested that uh, it was a requirement that parcel I remainder be added to parcel H. We have a little disagreement there. The letter from the township permits that to occur, but doesn't require it. So for the last 25 years, parcel I remainder has been a freestanding parcel, own tax parcel number, and taxes have been paid on that. And, and so when we look at that, we want to assure that there's access uh, to that lot. The township design standards as interpreted by the planning department would say that Timber Bluff, the main road here, would need to conform to the current township uh, requirements. Though that road was created in 1979, uh, well before the township ordinance, which came into effect, I think in 2001. <clears throat> this applicant is in no position to cause uh, timber bluff to be brought up to the township standards. And I suspect many of the folks here live on timber bluff and they're wondering, well, what, what might be going on with regard to timber bluff? Um, and it's precisely that uh, provision that your ordinance contemplates that if there's a parcel that can't conform to the current township guidelines, but there's a prior uh, roadway, private roadway established in 1979, that there can be an exception where if, if a party can't meet the township requirements, another parcel would be denied access. That's the basis for coming before you. And so the point is to permit access to parcel I remainder over parcel H, thereby permitting access to that parcel. And, and it's exactly that circumstance here. But, uh, we communicated with the township ahead of time. Uh, the fire chief, who I believe is here, has certainly commented on it and has raised concern, which we understand that if and when uh, that parcel, parcel I remainder was built upon, he would want to be certain as to emergency access to it and, and turnaround of that access. We understand that and, and we're in agreement with that. The recommendation is that there be a deed restriction uh, put on parcel I remainder, and we're all we're fine with that. Um, but when that suggestion came forward with the staff report a couple of days ago, we didn't have time to prepare such a restriction um, nor communicate with a buyer about that. And that's why we suggest that if uh, after the public hearing, if there are concerns, we would answer those. But we'd like to take then the next couple of weeks, put together the exact restriction and then bring it before you with the township attorney's uh, work in that process, my own, as well as the buyer's attorney. We thought that'd be much more efficient than trying to describe to you the various conditions. But I, but I will tell you um, kind of a little outline of those is that parcel I remain, remainder would never be divided you know, before it was built upon, there would be a submission for review and approval by the township fire chief and that uh, circumstances regarding emergency access would need to be addressed to his satisfaction. That this private drive, kind of shown here very loosely, would only service this parcel I remainder, wouldn't service any other land around it, just, just that particular parcel. Um, there, your township ordinance requires that there be a maintenance agreement and 
the 1979 document for the rest of Timber Bluff does contain a maintenance agreement for those folks, but there would need to be a maintenance agreement between parcel H and parcel I with respect to this private driveway. It's also understood that the construction of any improvements on parcel I remainder would have to satisfy all other requirements of the township zoning ordinances so that it's in compliance there. And the township would be named as a party in the document such as the township itself could enforce the document. So uh, we've appreciated our dialogue with the township and the township attorney. We think this is the most efficient way to proceed. And we're hopeful that the folks sitting in the audience can have some uh, understanding that there's no intention to develop this property. We're simply trying to implement the easement that was established in 1979. I'd be happy to take any questions. Unless... Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions of the applicant? You did a pretty good job of explaining. Thank you. Okay. Any discussion? I'd like to open the public hearing if there is no discussion or questions at this time. Hearing none, I'd take a motion to go to public hearing. So moved. Thank support. you, Member Nurek. Thank you for the support, Member Rappin. All those in favor to go to public hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. If any member of the public wishes to address us at this time, you can come up to the microphone and state your name and address and limit your comments to three minutes, please. I guess five minutes. That's what our standard is here. So five minutes. And uh, if you're joining us online, uh, press star nine to be connected electronically on the phone or raise your hand electronically and uh, system manager fast will uh, get you in contact with us. Anybody in the room wish to step up? Come on up. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Stacy Buford, and I'm the president of the Timberbrook Architectural Committee. Uh, I did have an opportunity to meet with Brian uh, last Friday, um, get a little bit of information. I think part of the reason that I think a lot of us are here today communication has been a little sparse. And so we got the notice. Um, and I think we've just been really concerned about what's happening with our neighborhood. And we don't have a lot of the details. We learned more from hearing Ms. Smith talk than I've been able to garner um, for the last two weeks. But I, I, we I, too. I, I think part of our concern <laughs> is that, and, and yes, they've indicated a lot won't be developed, but doesn't, you know, but we're putting an easement in, I think in terms of what's the cost to the neighborhood, if anything, um, does that cost go to the applicant or does that fall to us? I understand it's gonna be sold. So there's a lot of questions here with regards to what are we, what, are, what is our obligation to um, the inspector report, which I've not been able to see. So it'd be nice if we could at least, you know, do we have a dangerous situation back there? I don't know, because I've not seen the inspection report and I don't think anybody in my neighborhood's been able to see it. Um, so those are, the, those are some of the questions we have. I think you've answered a few of them in regards to where the lot's going. I don't know who the sale is going to. <clears throat> we have, you know, I've, I've heard stories. Uh, again, I don't like to work on innuendo and rumor. That's not fair. Um, but again, we just want to know, is that lot going to be developed? Yes, not today. Is the applicant going to build on it? Um, is it going to impact any other lots? I know there's, that easement goes through one of the other lots on the property. That wasn't mentioned today, and so I assume you know that individual is not here today. But I know that there's there's some impact to us as a as a community. So we are concerned as to what that restrictions or what those safety and stop me if my time ends. But what those safety concerns are, what our costs are, if any, or does that fall back to the applicant? I've heard two different stories, and 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 basically, what's the future of that property? Now we hear a lot about I, but I don't know what's happening with you. The other property we're moving out of I back into the road. It's just again, a lot of this is just we don't know what's what's happening here. So we would like some answers in regards to that. You know where we can go to get those. So thank you. Today. We'll try and uncover some of those for you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to step up? And Mr. Smith, at the end of the public hearings, I'll give you an opportunity to respond to any of these if you feel that, that you wish to do that. Anyone else uh, like to add anything? Don't everybody rush off at once. They have to have a stampede. I think we're outnumbered tonight. Uh, I'm, Name and address, please. I'm Dave Overholt, uh, 7673 Timber Bluff Drive. 
And just to build on a little bit of what Stacy said, I guess one one request. I don't know if it's as part of the um, deed restrictions. Would it be possible to refer to the Timber Bluff Architectural Committee um, covenants just to make sure that any any future development or anything would be in line with the covenants? If you look at those parcels, they're both included with the um, you know parcel H and I, along with the rest of the lots along there are all part of the Timber Bluff Architectural Committee. So I guess that would be one request I would have if that legally makes sense. All right, quick note of that. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Anyone else? My name is Bill, my, my name is Bill Mills. I live in the uh, uh, 2161 Hearth side and I got a notice of this and the, I, I didn't quite understand everything that was said. Um, there's parcel H I remainder is I the little spot of I don't have a, you have a pointer yeah, here somewhere. Let me switch unless somebody else has the <clears throat> thank you. I believe I do this tonight. Not very good at it, but I'll give it a try. This parcel is I. I remainder. Yes. Actually, you know what? There's probably a better way to do this, isn't there, you guys? Pencil. I H. And what's the spot, the, the parcel just above I? This, I believe, is the I, I remainder. Right? I don't think that's right. Okay. No, I think you got it wrong there. Got yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I want to make remember. sure I got what we're, we're talking about. So you've got, where you got the X? Is that? I, 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 I got remainder. them backwards. Okay. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm oh, yeah, very I know, good at I know you're just the chairman, but um, an H is, this guy, is, is the other per parcel. That's I. And this is what I. parcels are being sold? Do we know it? Are we allowed to understand, to know that information? Yeah. Uh, parcel IR, I believe, is the one that is potentially. Okay. How do you get to IR now? Can you or not, can you not? You don't. It's a hike right. through the woods. All right. Um, now, when you say that there's been a commitment, like Mr. Smith said, that they're not going to develop IR, um, we don't have any legal assurance of that, do we? I think that he said develop it into a development of multiple houses is how I understand. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I, I think they'd like to leave their options open for the property in the future, maybe. But so we can't rely upon that representation, obviously. Well, he's saying there's no plans to develop the property right now. I, again, so. I can't rely And he did say that, that, I believe he said that there would uh, as I think, uh, he said no further that, splitting. Yeah, there's yeah. no further splitting or development. And in all fairness to all of you, I'm not exactly sure why I'm here. My, my lot touches, I think I said 300 feet or something from the, I'm in a different area. But, you know, as a buddy of the party, I thought I asked some questions. And uh, I just wanted to know, um, uh, when whoever bought these property and divided three parts, why didn't they think about how they're going to get to these different parts? Why is it now our problem? I don't know that it's your problem per se. That's well, I'm mean, part of the township, so I guess it's right. our collective problem. I think by reading that 1976 ruling that talked about easement to these properties. The 1996 ruling? 76. 76, okay. What did it say about those, Wendy? Um, We'd have to look through the file. Yeah, we don't have that information. So those are the kind of questions we have. They're all legitimate questions, I think. But, well, in the uh, packet it was out to the public, right? Yeah, on the website. So the, yeah. the fire inspector's recommendations were open all to of the public. All of this is open to the public. Oh, OK. It was on the website. So okay. I've heard multiple comments that these things weren't available to the public, and they were on the website available to the OK, public. I just got this. Um, so OK, um, thank you. I, I'll just. Add to that uh, while he makes this way, you can go back to your seat. I just wanted to let people know that this information that, that Member Kirsten is, is referring to is available on the Township website and will be after the meeting as well. So you guys can review it. But if you go to the Township website under agendas and minutes, you can see uh, there's the meeting packets link. And if you look at the meeting packet, that is all of the information that all of us get prior to the meeting. And you can read that as well. That's so uh, that's where all those details can be found. And those meeting packets typically come out 
three days or so prior to a meeting, uh, any township committee meeting, including okay. the board. Oh, uh, yeah, my my notice didn't say that to me. But anyway, um, the other question I have is that uh, there, someone I think Chris said that there may be another hearing if do this. If we choose to table this this evening there will be another meeting where it is addressed in the future. And at that time, we may choose to have another public hearing. Okay. We have not um, scheduled yeah. that as of yet. I would just say also, if I'm looking at my notice right now and um, I don't see reference to the website, but uh, anyway, that's, thank you very much. That's great feedback, by the way. So I appreciate I, that. Yeah, we'll, because we'll how do we that. know? We just get this thing in the mail and yeah, I'm just here because I, I was invited. No, that's, no, no, that's, I, I think we, I think we'll have a conversation with no, staff and how we handle those. Yeah, because I don't think future. any of the people here look at that. So, okay. Yeah, yes. no, there should be a reference to that. Uh, yeah. And so I'm, as Member Nordag pointed out, I'm I'm very thankful that you took the time to well, let us know. Glad I showed up. See ya. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Scott Van Lenti and I live at 2154 Hearthside Drive, uh, which would be right here. Thank you. Uh, my question first is part of this easement seems to be part of a driveway today. So that's a driveway. I don't know how long a driveway has been there but there has to be some sort of deed restriction involving that driveway, I would assume. My next question is, why would they want special consideration not to create a regular road, but yet no consideration to not develop that road into a addition to the road itself? They want special attention so that they don't have to spend any more additional capital on that easement. Is that what I'm understanding? That's not my understanding. That's not my understanding. So they just want to put a dirt road back there to access that? They want to, as I read the request, they want to extend the road. The, the road is there. They want to extend the road, but with exception, not to do any improvements. Is that what was said? I think what they're asking for is the ability to extend the road should they decide to do some improvements. And I believe what the fire chief has stated is if you do build on it, you need to follow or do these. He's recommending to us that we recommend to the board that they follow his guidelines. And I think, by the way, this is great. Like we, we will be asking the applicant every question that you're asking us. Okay. So now a little history that what I've been told, sure. and correct me if I'm wrong, this property was purchased so that this road would not be extended to access this property, this property, and this property. So somebody with a lot of money, more than what I have, didn't want that road going through their property or behind their property than to be developed. So they just bought all this land and now they want to sell it to someone else. I'm not aware. I that. bought that piece of property because there was no development back there. And it was owned by a very well-known name in the neighborhood, well-respected individual. My understanding also is that that person didn't really want to sell that land. Now, we haven't talked about this parcel, which was in the purchase with these other two. So there's a lot of acres there, some on the water, and a lot of smart people in the room here today and in the audience, but you're sitting here and you're telling me that they're not gonna develop this? Come on. Really? Why isn't anybody just being honest with us? 
and tell us what's actually happening. I don't want a house behind me. Special, uh, you know, uh, it's not going to be divided. Well, that's because of the rules. That doesn't mean that they aren't going to get another exemption. Or in the deed restriction, it's going to be different. No current plans to build. Yeah, that's today. That changes tomorrow morning. What is the exact length of the easement right now? It said, oh, about 200 feet. Everything's an estimate. No real facts here tonight. Let's get some real information. I don't want a house back there. And whatever I can do to stop that road, that's why I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to come up and join in the fun? Anyone? Going once? Going twice? All right, Stephanie, do we have anybody online that wishes to join? We don't have any raised hands. Thank you. I would entertain a motion at this time to end the public hearing on this matter. I'll make a motion. Support. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Member Deering. Thank you, Member Rappin. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Uh, at this time, Chief Majors, would you wish to come up and uh, answer some questions for us or provide any comments that you might have on, on what you um, saw over there? I'd be happy to. Yeah, any questions uh, you have, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to, to at least give my opinion on. Does anybody uh, have anything that they wish to ask the Chief? I'd love it if the Chief would. Thank you for coming tonight, Chief. Uh, I good it. to see you. Uh, would you just give us a summary of, of what you what you uh, encountered and, and you know the request that you'd be looking for if this was developed? Absolutely. Um, I think I just know that. Uh, oh, now you can. Now you can. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I have to try again. <laughs> there we go. Right there. Right there. No more. No, no. Nobody sneezes. <laughs> so again. The fire department doesn't give an opinion on whether you should or shouldn't develop sure. that. That's not something that we weigh in on. Um, basically, if a project is put before a uh, planning commission, we have a small part to make sure that there is emergency access and that uh, we can mitigate any emergency for any township resident, any township household, any township business. And so with this one in particular, uh, it, it, it came up that, uh, that the access, uh, access road exception um, was requested so they could sell that piece of property um, without a house or a development plan. There's not a lot uh, for us to go with. I do have uh, concerns. This, this portion here is very, very steep. Um, it's a heavily wooded lot, um, very tight back there, and there's no hydrants. And so those are some of the things that concern uh, the fire department uh, for access. Um, anybody who lives on Timber Bluff knows that it's beautiful back there, but getting 40,000 pound apparatus is difficult and getting them all back out is even more difficult. So those are some of the concerns that the uh, fire department has with that. Um, I, I recommended, again, if it's just to sell the property and have the potential um, or the access to put a road in, I don't have an opinion on should or shouldn't, um, but if there's, no, if there's no building planned, I guess I don't have an, an objection or a recommendation for that where we recommended the deed restriction if they ever choose to develop and, and split or put houses or, or developments or whatever, then some of those um, recommendations would come forth with turnarounds or, or pull off lanes or um, hammerheads or, or any of those kind of things that we uh, would typically recommend um, similar to a private drive uh, in the area with uh, Lena Rose or Tannenbaum or the 2500 block of Buttrick. Those are private drives that are similar, they're really close, and they do have exceptions there um, that we have recommended in the past. So there is a little bit of 
I guess, past precedents of what those re uh, restrictions could be, uh, should the planning commission choose to accept any kind of future developments, those would be recommendations that I would probably put before you. Okay, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Member Maxley. You say the slope is pretty steep. What's the gradient of the existing approximately? I believe it's about 10%. And what's the maximum you normally allow? Like 8%? We, we like it closer to six, but 10 is about the most we could we could probably handle so but again and i would say that the 10% the is already the existing driveway I, I will give that caveat um the rest of it is is a, is, is less um but again it's it would be difficult to put half a dozen fire trucks back there and then get them out uh, especially in february at night in a snowstorm uh, some of those some of those would be difficult with trees close on both sides very much right good luck <laughs> anyone else have any questions of the chief while we have them so my my understanding is that the when you went back there, I'm assuming where I had put this arrow on the map is approximately where the existing cul-de-sac is. That is the uh, the driveway to the existing house uh, that that one of the gentlemen was speaking of. Right, and so if 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 they were to decide to build on any of these parcels, uh, the recommendation would be to improve the road to that. Um, so this current spot is that is that kind of it would be it would be very similar to what is already there on this uh, right where there basically uh, fire trucks anywhere from nine to twelve feet wide, um, okay. thirty five feet long. It, we would need to support that mm -hmm. uh, in, in the in similar uh, road construction to your Lena roads, your right. Ton and Bomb, and some of those other private drives in the area to support our vehicles' weight, and then have access where we could potentially get out of each other's way and turn around. Uh, so those are some of the improvements that we look at, not necessarily curb and gutter that you see on the rest of Timber. Right, okay. And I, I estimated that to be about 250 feet. Did you, did you look at it from a distance at all or not? I did, I actually walked the property three times just because it's Timber Bluff, as beautiful as it is, it, it does keep you up at night with concerns on how do we fight fire back there or respond. So I did, I did uh, walk the property a few times. I brought my fire marshal and my fire inspector back there to kind of get their opinion on it as well. Okay. Um, again, it falls under the same, it should it ever become developed. We would have similar recommendations with the private drives in the area. Um, yeah, very, uh, very steep. Um, I don't know if that's me. Um, We're yeah. trying to figure that the out. steep grade and, and the tightness <laughs> of it, uh, those, are, those are considerations that have to be mitigated should they choose to ever pursue building on that property. Um, again, I, I think that we were very much not in favor of any of this until it was uh, intimated this was for a sale just to uh, and not to be developed. And that's why we put in the caveat, if it is potentially going to be developed, it goes back to you and, mm -hmm. and you decide whether or not that's a project worth pursuing. And then I would give my recommendations at that time for emergency access. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate your comments. Appreciate today. it. Thank you very Thank much. You. All right. Anyone else have any other uh, thoughts on this discussion? Otherwise, I... Uh, I have many questions yeah. for I, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Mr. Smith, would you, would you like to come back up a moment? Uh, perhaps right, we can bounce a few things off of here. I'll let you guys go first. Who would... Uh, I, if you want, I, I do have yeah, a couple yeah. just... Absolutely. Just very brief comments. Jump First, right in. Uh, Mr. Buford, uh, who represents the architectural group, I guess, from the timber belt, fully agree that communication has not, there wasn't any communication before this. I think we weren't sure with whom to communicate and understand that they would have questions. And Katie will meet with, with them to talk about uh, issues like cost and safety with respect to timber bluff. Um, the property to be sold. You can write on it. One parcel, two parcels, three parcels. Okay. All, all together. And to be clear, I said that this buyer has no present intention to develop this property. The buyer has every right to develop the property. Property has been paid. Uh, Real estate tax has been paid on parcel I remainder for 25 years as though it's a freestanding lot. Um, 
that's all I can say. And I, I think it's a fair comment. Is there an assurance it won't be built? No, there's no assurance. It's, it's a buildable lot you know, if, if it has access and it meets all of the requirements of the township. Um, there's a question about this. We have, we have a private road here. We have a private road here. And we're talking about a private driveway to extend to parcel I remainder. This private road was established pursuant to the uh, 1979 document. So it's not something that's been created. And I think in your packet, uh, I'm going to try and put this up. <laughs> this is that that private uh, street right here that was established in the 1979 document. The location wasn't set in the 1979 document until later, but but that's where it came from. Okay. Questions? Do all three parcels have a easement to? access this cul-de-sac or this to act, access through Timber Bluff or is it only I and H that it's only I and H the I other the other parcel the other parcel has excuse me, sir excuse me sir he has he has the floor who's speaking who's speaking Mr. Okay. Is that the question? Sorry. well let me say I've seen the records my understanding is that this parcel gains access from this direction. Parcel H and I are the only parcels entitled to access pursuant to the 1971 document. That's why we call them parcel H and I, because that's how they're defined in the document. Understood. Thank you. Anybody else have any other questions or? Member Norday? I have a few, and you may not be able to answer them, and I fully accept that. Uh, given that this is in an LLC, which again is a, a veil at some level, right? And, and a legal one, right? So um, can you disclose who the buyer is? No. Okay. Can you disclose, um, is it, all right. Uh, the, will the buyer, uh, do you represent the buyer? No. So you just represent the seller. Yes. So the all right. Will the seller, um, the the current owner of the property uh, within the deed restriction, um, will they agree to pay any additional fees that are incurred because of this road and and what the fire chief and other the other requirements that will come to it if it affects this neighborhood? Um, I'm not I'm not quite sure of the question, but but let me way. I think I let me break it down this way. Are there costs to the existing neighbors on Timber Bluff? That's probably if one question. Are, are there, will there be costs to those neighbors? And uh, I'd have to go back to look at the 1979 document to see if it includes parcel H and I. I don't think it does. Um, and I'm sure Katie would consider uh, causing the sale of this property to include a participation in further cost to that timber buff, but I can't, I don't want to go any further tonight. And I think that's one reason why I want to that's put, it in, put it in a yeah, document. And that's reasonable. And that, yeah, that's yeah. again why I'd like to see another public hearing because it, yeah. I can tell you from my perspective, um, if, if these residents incur a cost because of this, I have a hard time approving. Sure. And, and I think the second part of the question is, would these residents have any cost associated with this private driveway? Zero. No. No, I understand that. Yeah. But there, there could be additional costs because of what the road Un understood. Be Agreed. That, understood. Construction yeah. traffic, for instance. Construction traffic, or yeah. if the fire chief wanted hydrants put in, we, we don't know until until you, it, yeah, whoever that buyer comes in. Yeah. We don't. That's why we suggest, as we did, that the deed restriction contemplate that before development, the submission to the fire chief, and his conditions have to be addressed. Oops. It's, it's again whatever whatever those are I yeah I, I just i would like yeah. to see something yeah. in that deed restriction that that whoever the owner of that property at that time will 
will assume those costs. Yeah, I would think it'd be a condition to getting a building permit and I'm sure Brian's taking notes and, yep. and Mr. Holm, your, your township attorney will make sure that it gets in the document. But it would be a condition to getting a permit to build is that the fire chief's uh, requirements are satisfied. We could also uh, make it a deed restriction. I mean, it, it, no, no, that's, that's, that's what I'm that. talking about. Yeah. That's what would be in the deed yeah. restriction. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Thank you. Anyone else? I just have a couple, I think so, a couple of questions that had come up to us. So I think one of them was, um, and I'm going to ask a question before this, I guess. Are, so there's three lots associated with this, correct? Three Eight, parcels. I'd comb through parcels. <laughs> are currently, are they all owned by the same person? Same entity, yes. Okay. Yes. Do any of the three currently, well, we know the one doesn't, do any of the other two have homes or buildings on them currently? I think they're all big. Right, they're big. Yeah. Are they all three like listed in the um, Timber Bluff Association as I homes don't... within this association? I'm assuming since it's a private drive that they pay annual I, premiums I, to the I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know. I think it'd be it, it's addressed in the 1979 document, but I don't I don't know. I think that's a big question, being that who lives on that street currently, if they're part of an association, they're paying dues to maintain the street currently. Wondering if we're going to add the potential, possibly for three lots to have potentially three homes. Right. On but them. that that was done in 1979. Okay. Yeah. And you don't that know they, that. when they when they purchased they purchased with whatever's in that document. But you don't know the answer whether they are part of that community. honestly i think they are not okay I, then, I think originally timber bluff was divided in nine parcels and i think the document kind of plates that each owner would pay one ninth but then they were subdivided right and so we don't know whether these lots have anything to do with paying for their association that's i do not know that i do not know that i do not know okay that. And then um, my other question was, there was a question about development restrictions, architectural development restrictions for these lots based on Timber Bluff's restrictions. And what you're telling me, I'm assuming you don't know the answer to that either. If they're part of that association, whether they would be part of those restrictions yeah. or not. Um, so you're asking me tough questions. And the reason they're really tough is because I drafted that document in 1979 for a different client, for a totally different client. I believe parcel H and I are not included in the maintenance costs of Timber Bluff, and they're not in the architectural restriction area. But that's my feeble failing memory as opposed to the document. And I'll be happy to look it up and respond yes. to Brian. If this comes back to us, I think those things need to come back with some sort of proposal to the association that maintains this road that these parcels would be using it's just unfathomable to me but i think that needs to be addressed okay that's good to know that's good to know i mr chairman uh, yes I, I appreciate your willingness to, to communicate I, I i would tell you and perhaps to your client if they would have communicated earlier and we see this a lot this room would be empty tonight i suspect uh, and it would be great if it was empty when we come back after we table this it, timing's tough. We did, COVID, everything. We got the staff this report is, two days ago, awesome. so we didn't know yeah. what we were reacting to. I, I, right. I totally agree. But, but yeah, I mean, there's, totally there's the mail service. I understand. I understand. Anyone else have anything else up here that they wish to address, Mr. Smith? He's had some great information. Make a motion that we table this and allow Mr. Smith to come back with a recommendation on a deed restriction. Support. It's moved by Member Nordic, supported by Member Rappin to table. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. So if I could address the, yes, yeah, that's what I was going to do. If that's all right with you. I'm sorry. No, I, I was just like, that. wait a minute. I want to make sure they know okay. what's So uh, we are going to table this. We're not making any decisions right now. Uh, when the applicant comes back with additional information, it will be included in the packet prior to the meeting. Uh, I think our next meeting is 
if it's scheduled then. Well, right. We don't know when it. We don't know what it's going to be. So, uh, but if you watch the count the township website, which is Cascade TWP dot gov no dot com right dot com. And can Brian notice them? Just like Brian, can you just notice them like we did before? And, and make a reference to the website this time. We can add that on there if it's Thank not. Yep. Yeah, but if you go to the, the township website. You can you can see the packet information related to the planning commission meeting, and you can you can see the agenda. And if you watch that agenda list, you'll know when this comes up, and when it when it returns, and then uh, and then you can come back, and I'll probably be here. I'll give you an opportunity to speak. If it's not slated for public hearing, don't panic. Uh, we'll we'll address it at that time. So, so will we get a written notice again? Or not? That's what we just asked him to do. We just asked it to so be the answer is yes. All right, thank you for coming. Uh, with that, we are going to move on to Article 8, which is case number 213640. The applicant is Cascade Township. And we're having a public hearing to discuss uh, amending a zoning ordinance for temporary outdoor right. uses. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for coming. <clears throat> so we're going to have this one. Well, one second. I thought maybe it would be exciting enough, but apparently it's not, Brian. I'm sorry. <laughs> we might have a person or two left. You never know. All <laughs> nine people. I'm sad. So back at our June 7 meeting, um, this brought up of the Planning Commission setting a public hearing to consider changes to the zoning ordinance um, to allow temporary outdoor uses. Um, so this amendment is, we've been doing this as uh, kind of a temporary administrative approval so businesses can come and apply for a temporary outdoor use, whether it's a tent or outdoor retail and things like that. And that's kind of a, um, usually for a rolling system, it was, the deadline was back in January. It's been extended a few times with the township board. So this is making kind of a permanent thing. So the township board is going to have to keep extending this temporary uh, use there. So this would be in the zoning amendment itself. Um, you have Steve's memo here, as well as I believe a letter from the township attorney on that. And so they're proposing three amendments to the zoning ordinance that you find on the second page there, adding a definition of what temporary use is, um, adding that as an allowed use in the, the B1 and B2, so two commercial districts, and then adding the criteria that these uses would be evaluated by, by staff for the administrative approval. And so this time, um, it is a public hearing, so after taking public comment, we'd be making a recommendation to the township board for their consideration. Any questions of staff regarding the report? Such a thorough report. There's no questions, Brian. You did great. <laughs> yeah. Not a whole lot for this one. Um, all right. Uh, yes, Member Merlin. Actually, hadn't thought when we last talked that we were talking about temporary outdoor uses, were we? Yeah, we, we were, yes. So, this isn't the general. Um, and in trying to read this, how does one? One doesn't need a pandemic order to make have a need for a temporary outdoor use. So it's just up to the applicant to say it's going to be temporary. There is no, I noticed there was no time bomb on this. I think yeah. that's what you're yeah. It's a year, number seven there. The use is permitted for one year and then it can be renewed with a new application. Yeah, one year takes you through four pretty time. whole seasons. It's yeah. um, a long time. But so one year isn't. Temporary, is it? I think that's what we have to decide. <laughs> this is a draft, right? So, uh, you know, this is the proposal. So, if we want to make it uh, six weeks or six months, I think that's our choice. It sounds like the township board was doing about a, a six month rotation and they kind of kept extending it. And then that's what led to the discussion for us bit. to come up with something a little more permanent. Yeah, exactly. And they so they didn't have to keep extending it. Sure. At this time, we haven't required businesses to come back and reapply this time. I think the deadline is, I think it's in here. I forget if it's later this fall or whatnot. 
late October. Yeah. Um, um, okay. I think I, if it were me, there's, and I was concerned about it being 12 months, I think uh, seven or eight months is a good fit because if you want a structure for essentially the non snowiest months, you're looking at about seven. Seven and the non coldest months, you're looking at about six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it could get pretty cold here, but uh, yeah, so it takes, right. I mean, yeah, right. I, I mean, I don't know what that mix is. I'm sure if we all talked about it, we'd all come up with a different, a different time frame. So it's at 12 months. Is there a desire to modify that uh, proposal with a shorter period, Mr. Merwin? All I would say is that it would require a far different outdoor structure. Structure. Mm -hmm. Agreed. If it's in, if it goes for the whole year. Agreed. Um, and I had thought this might have been a, if we were talking about temporary, that this would be like a seasonal temporary, which would be perhaps even shorter than the six month period. But um, maybe it's six months um, and you can put heaters outside if it gets cooler. I think some of the businesses that are using the current ones, they definitely have continued to utilize it during the colder months due to some of the pandemic restrictions that are being eased now. But I think it has been used in the year round for their benefit so far, at least. But we didn't have any, any snow last winter, really, <laughs> to speak of. So, I mean, they got away with that pretty easy. Uh, but I... I guess I would ask, how many of these requests did staff receive? Do you know roughly? Um, I believe we have five, five or six that have been approved that are. Okay, so you them. had five or six over the course of a, a pandemic, which was what, a year, year and a half is our average pandemic right now. Um, so if we have another situation, uh, it would be safe to say that staff would not be inundated with requests uh, if we said that these had to renew every, I'm just throwing out a number here, six months, uh, it's, it's not like you're going to have 35 people show up at Township Hall asking to have their temporary structure permit renewed. Uh, Probably not quite that many. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because I think that's one of the concerns by making mm -hmm. it a longer renewal, it obviously lessens the, the load on staff. I want to be uh, conscious of that. Any other discussion before we go to public hearing? Member Merlin. Would the fire department have to approve any heating elements used? I would. It talks in here about mm -hmm. something. Yeah, I would believe so. The building inspector. Building questions. inspector and fire department for that was one of my numbers three and four there. Yeah. It talks about approval from the fire department. Three, approval from the township fire department. But does that. When you set forth your application, does it also require you to put down whether you're going to use any or any heating? I don't know if I had that language specifically. I think that's something we try to look for, and I it, believe that's something that. Yeah, it just says approval from the Township Building Inspector and the Fire Department. It does not, it does not specifically say anything about heating, but it does say lighting must comply with Township lighting regulations there was something in a weird spot about heating. i thought i remembered seeing the word heating in there but i'm not seeing it right now but obviously that would fall under the building the building code and you know the building inspector's uh prerogative but if they're if they have it approved and then there's a cold snap for a week in september and they put some heating elements out there, mm -hmm. they wouldn't normally come back to you. They just put them out, I suspect. I would expect currently if someone's just using their current allowed patio, I guess at least I'm not aware of them needing, I guess I'd want to check with our fire chief <laughs> if they <Yeah>. require. <laughs> um, I, at least you know they don't come to playing and zoning if someone wants to put heaters on their patio that I'm aware of, that would be, a building code or fire code question. That's something we can definitely. And how they're plugged in, mm -hmm. like the seven plugs on the township. Yeah, whether plugs are a propane 
you know, heater or something like that. <laughs> That seems to me the chief safety with sure. electrical wires and sure. Okay. Uh, any other comments? Less humorous ones, please, Member Merlin. Uh, <laughs> At this time, I would entertain a motion to go to public hearing. Member Rappin, you move to go to public hearing. Thank you, Member Rappin. Thank you, Member Nordyke. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? We are now in public hearing. Since the room is now empty, uh, Assistant Manager staff, if anybody online wishes to speak, they could raise their hand electronically or connect via telephone by pressing star nine. Has anyone done that to speak to us? Uh, the we don't have any raised hands at this time. Do we have anybody watching? We do have three members in the audience, yes. Okay, good to know, thank you. Uh, well, with that, I would take a, a motion to close the public hearing. I'll move. Thank you, Member Merlin. Do we have support? I got support from several people. We'll take uh, member Gorsuch tonight on that one. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Well, that was an easier public hearing than the previous one. So we're moving right along here, guys. Uh, timing wise seems to be the biggest concern here from what I'm hearing. I do hear some electrical concerns, but I kind of feel that, hey, you know what? If we start regulating, if somebody plugged a space heater in, uh, this could get really tangled up. I think we leave that to the building code and the building inspector and the fire, the fire marshal, uh, and they're under their hat, is my opinion. And I would be fine with tweaking the time frame on this. Member, I'm going to let Member Katzma go first, just because Member well, Merlin has gone so many times already ahead of you. But I, I was recused for the whole first. <laughs> You were. She had to make up for lost ground. Is I feel that... like you could have helped a lot in that situation. <laughs> too, so, All right. Member Kathman, what do you have? I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but what if, is there a way to kind of flip it on its head? So instead of, um, so for, if, like when the building inspector comes out and they inspect it, can they, is there something that they can say, like this is approved for uh, three season use or four season use? Do you know what I'm saying? So it's okay. So this has heating in it, or it's set up for this, and you know, I'm trying to kind of flip it on its head a little bit. If if they can make a judgment call while they're out there, and they could say, "Yes, look, this, you know, what are you guys, what are you guys going to use for heating?" Is this? It might get into a little bit. Think about policing would be my. That, 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 that was my it. that was my kind of flip side on it, but I just thought that would save on some of the the other half of. People coming out, but I do think to sorry to find what we were talking about. Those were the it's in the recommendations from council that talks about the heating must be approved by fire. Mm -hmm. That's where it talks more about um, the ADA requirements. It talks a lot more in their details versus just the generic what we've been doing now. The other thing that I just want to say for my two cents is I think. I think these temporary things were put up to, in a pandemic when there was like truly businesses were losing money and going to go under based on not having customers coming in and not making revenue. And I think that one of two things, one, I think that there could be more time to put together a new proposal for if something like this were to occur again. I don't know if as a township, it's much more detailed if we want to actually put together an actual temporary use permit for, you know what, it's winter time and we've got the staff, we can have 10 more tables outside, we wanna apply for a temporary use permit. That's completely different than what this was actually set up for. This was set up for a pandemic emergency use based on that. So I think we're kind of looking at this in two different ways where do we wanna set up something for emergency use in the future that if something were to ever happen again, to allow a quick turnaround for businesses that are suffering, to be able to have access to outdoor space to serve their customers. 
that's one. Or two, do we wanna really allow outdoor use permits temporarily all over the township and have temporary structures put up that we would have to have more regulations put in place where they are inspected, they do have to do you know, different things. And I think that's a whole completely, to me that goes into our whole like master plan that we're talking about. Do we want that in our township versus something that's truly emergency temporary use? That's my opinion. Thank you. Member Merlin. I agree with Wendy's comments just now. I think we need to have if someone's going to apply for this, we need to have their site plan be more specific and encompassing of what could be on that. So if they say, yes, we could be using heating, then the building inspector approval would come into play because he'll say how and when, and the fire chief would do the, would do the same. Right, so, that needs to be part of the application. Yeah. Um, so that that site plan needs to be fully developed. I also think the notion of, I had thought this was to help cascade businesses in general. Now it's not pandemic related and that gets to the master planning question and the aesthetics more become more important. Um, I would personally not like to see the flapping uh, <laughs> plastic walls and whatnot that we ate in at one point um, during the pandemic. But so I think it does require a little more careful thought as to what we are trying to accomplish here. And we probably didn't, we're not clear enough to <clears throat> the staff at our last meeting because we confused me. Um, and I confused me. Well, I think before our last meeting, all restrictions were not completely lifted from the state. And so I think we still were in a limbo period of not knowing what was gonna happen and wanted to kind of continue forward with what was going on, not knowing if we were gonna truly lift all capacity restrictions. That just happened, I think the 22nd of June. It, 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 yes, and I, I think the idea here is not necessarily to allow these structures to continue to be up, I think it's more or less preparing for if there ever is a need for them again in the future. We have some, we have a, a method in place so that people don't have to wait two months to get in front of the township board. They can go to staff and staff can, can deal with that. So that makes it sort of a need based or emergency based temporary use. I would have thought the DDA, someone from the DDA would be here to tell us whether. Businesses want this on a regular basis. I, I'll speak. I I'll speak to that just briefly. I, I think the idea is just to have it as a general benefit to businesses. Is the idea behind it because it has been well received from the businesses that you've used it, and from our office at least, we haven't received any complaints or concerns about temporary uses or anything like that. So I think that was the idea behind it. Was just a, a general benefit to allow them to use. When you this say general temporary. benefit, do you mean during the? capacity restrictions or place, or do you mean a general benefit throughout the year? Correct. I don't think the citizens of Cascade also understand that it's coming about to be a general thing that will be happening all year. I, I've, I love our restaurants in Cascade. I frequent them more often than I should, and I support them having ability to do these things when they have capacity restrictions. So I don't wanna sound like I'm against this in any way, but I do think that there, we're talking two different things and we need to be clear on what we are talking about before we move forward. Because his idea of this is not what my original thought was. Okay, Member Nordhoff. Well, I think pre-pandemic, we had restaurants that had patios outside. Mm -hmm. That use was approved. Mm -hmm. I wanna kind of keep that thought in mind. Pre-pandemic patios, everything was good. We went into pandemic and allowed these additions to meet the state requirements of shutdowns and capacity limits and no indoor, whatever, dining, whatever. I think, uh, I might be jinxing this, but I think the pandemic's over. 
you watch it come this fall. I'll I know, say. but I'm just saying right now, I don't see a need for it. There's We're the pandemic as far as it's, it's past. Outdoor patios that we had in the past are fine. Pandemic, outdoor dining, I think, I think we've, we've we accommodated and now it's time to get back to business. Um, it's fine to have this on the shelf in case the pandemic does return or we can have staff do it real quick. I'm all for that. But how did we get through last winter? What, it looks like we're trying to reinvent the wheel. We got through last winter just fine with whatever regulations we had. I didn't see any fires or anything like that. So have it ready to go. But let's go back to pre-pandemic patios. Do you think that allowing these structures, for instance, I'm gonna, I'm, I, well, maybe I should just ask this. Uh, Brian, I th is there a difference between these igloos that I see and the wood structure that's covered with OSB and plastic? I mean, is one allowed in an outdoor patio setting or would they both be considered temporary structures? Because I think what I'm what I'm I'm what I'm hearing a concern of is that maybe in December some businesses think, oh hey, you know it'd be great to get permission to December, January, February have some outdoor dining, a little additional seating out there, and I'll throw a heater out there, and uh, people can go sit in my igloo. Uh, Which is, some people like. I mean, right. that's uh, no, I, I don't know whether I, we have that ability, what you're asking right. for this, right. to allow igloos versus more of the... And that's, I guess that's why I wanted to get a little description, because you know, some of them are a little bit more welcoming than others. I mean, you know, <laughs> sure. it's a Coleman tent versus uh, mm -hmm. a shade tree carpenter. Yeah, I'll try to answer that. I think pre-pandemic, if someone already had an outdoor patio that they used, they'd be allowed to have... Uh, igloo or something if it did go have to go through building code and things like that i believe um pre-pandemic was also before i was here actually uh <laughs> but what you're saying then, does make sense because i do think i had seen them prior but they were on current standing patios versus side they couldn't be on the sidewalk or in the parking lot public ac yep. access that's really yeah, what the temporary use was allowing people to expand onto their sidewalks or on a portion of their parking lot and have tables or maybe a shelter or something like that. So it's really kind of what space you're using um, for those uses. Okay. I've got one comment. I think. Yes, Member Jerry. Well, maybe two. Um, I think that we're going to find as the fall comes around and the winter, there still are people who are not comfortable eating in an indoor environment like they did pre-pandemic. So I think the ability for restaurants to offer this um, as a way to draw those people still into their businesses, I, 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 I would support that. Um, I also think it, it lends to the vibrancy of Cascade too. You know, when you see a bunch of people eating outside in January and we're allowing that, you know, it's just kind of, it's showing that we're supporting our businesses. We're le it's lending to the vibrancy. People are out and about, even in the winter time. Um, and it's not just limited to summer. So I'm in favor of continuing. Um, if nothing Can, else, for the sake of the businesses. Just going to float an idea here. If the approved time frame was shorter as opposed to longer that may deter some people from setting up a temporary structure because of the cost and um, perhaps if if they did it right and there weren't a lot of complaints they might they might get an extension granted but if they do something that's uh maybe not as athletically pleasing, staff may say, nope, you had your three months, you're done, take it down. I, I'm just throwing out some, some thoughts based on the comments. And then, yes, member Rappin. I think my one concern on the timing is that um, there's a cost to the business to put these up. Right. And I think too short of a time may deter them to do it or it may mean they're building something that's like we're forcing them to build something that's more like less aesthetically yeah. pleasing. 
versus if they are if they have an opportunity to build something that could last longer, it may be of higher quality of what we're looking for. So I just want to be you know mindful that we are not um, asking them to incur costs that they wouldn't really be able to reap benefits from uh, or to encourage them inadvertently to build something that might not be as great. And quite honestly, the pandemic might be over for all of us, but for businesses, they are suffering the effects. So, and it's going to be a while before they get back on their feet. And it's not over for all of us. Yes, Member Norek. Uh, just an idea. Could we kick the proverbial can on this? Recommend to the board that it's approved through calendar year 22 uh, with the recommendation to consider this in the master plan and uh, make a full approval after that. That master plan has gone through all of its iterations and suggestions from the community. I just have a question about the that. Why so is saying just as a temporary, right now it ends in October. Yeah. So saying keep currently what they have happening through 2022. Yep. It's January 2022. Yep. And throw it back to the master plan so we can figure out what. Yeah, to get to the end of next calendar year is it seems like we do, we do iterate a lot which is great, uh, but I want to have a mechanism in place that can service them now. Right, that's, and, then, and that's my concern. I think yeah. this fall we're going to be put back in. I just, I, I, to clarify, yeah. you said end of next calendar year, but you said January of 2022. I she said January of 20, I, I calendar of 22, so the end of oh, next December year. December 22. Yes. Okay, I just yes. want to clarify. Yes. yes. I, I just think that personally, my feeling is that's way too long for some of these semi-permanent, because now we're talking, we want them to be more of a permanent well, structure. I, I, I think he's saying that the staff would have the ability to approve the structure yeah, the duration through that is, time. Okay. If that's not an end-all date of when they would exist to. Okay. I think that's just giving staff, the, the recommendation is to have the township board allow staff to make these approvals uh, through calendar year 2022. And right? yeah, and I think we so could change the duration the way we are right now for another year until we figure it out. Yes, I would agree with that. If all the current approvals end 12 31 22, I think that's reasonable as I well. Think they currently end in October, though. They, they do, do. they end of October of 21. And my <laughs> point is, and there's a couple of months there that probably need to end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, that's, I, that's part of the problem. Is I think there's some structures that were already built under the current uh, rule of law, if you will, that probably aren't going to last until that long. No, and I think that's up to the township when they renew them and, uh, you know, whenever that is, whether or not. Uh, that's the question now. Do they have a time frame currently on how long they're good for? They just finished so October of this year. They're, we haven't they're put any kind of like six month, three month deadline. But, that but, deadline's been keep being and, extended. Right. And so my question is that. So we keep extending the deadline. So there's no renewal period right now. So if we say through the end of December of 2022, whatever's currently up can stay out for another year and a half. Does it? Yeah, does we're it just continuing sense, what we're doing. Does it make guess. sense for us to have this plan in place and approved to be executed by, uh, I'm just thinking hypothetically here. Okay, if, if we put this ordinance out there for temporary structures, and, and the township board approves or, uh, temporary structures to be allowed under this amendment through, we'll say calendar year 2022, and then, the, and then they're gone. And then at a later date, the township board could say, okay, we're going into code blue and temporary structures are allowed again. Um, does that for a certain period of time? Does, I mean, I guess it's really not far off from what they're doing now. Uh, what I would have thought is what Chris I think was going toward, which is that when we get essentially the new master plan, one of the actionable items for probably this committee, unfortunately, because this commission would be to try to come to grips with this on a more general basis, because I agree with Deidre that I view this as helping businesses. I personally believe everyone who eats outside in January Shows not vibrancy, but um, mental confusion. But that's neither here nor there. Um, but the, um, the the 
I would hate to see some of the structures that were up remain up for the next 18 months. Mm -hmm. um, the, the concern, I, I, and I agree with you, I think there's some that might not make it to October. The, the concern I, I see is that uh, with trying to address this in master plan is that I could think of some places where there isn't going to be a place in the master plan for these types of structures. Uh, I mean, it, and I, I'm trying to think of an example of a business without throwing anybody under the bus, but if you have a business that's, yeah, if, if you have a place- Parking lot space. That's right. That's what they. That's what they would have to do is set up in the parking lot or on the pedestrian sidewalk. And I don't know that. I. I guess I'm. I'm not sure that. Uh, you know. I, I think the idea behind this is to give, as as uh, member Nordhawk brought up, there's businesses that have outdoor areas. That's a no brainer to set this up in an outdoor e patio eating area. But when you have a business that doesn't currently have that. And you now want to throw this structure in a couple parking spaces or across the sidewalk, uh, that creates a whole new problem. And so I don't know that the I'm just thinking our our plan is probably not going to incorporate changing um, parking and sidewalk temporarily to allow a structure in a pandemic. And I, I mean, I think that's why this is being requested. But part of this is the question of is this only pandemic oriented or is this to help business oriented? And there are many cities around the world at which tables are outside oh, yeah. and get along perfectly well and create vibrancy in that city. Um, but they were permanently outside. Yeah. We well, haven't not had, permanently. Well, we haven't had any problem extending the temporary when it's needed that, that hasn't been an issue so i don't see where this is going to be a big problem uh, everybody who's asked for one's got one uh, the temporary deadlines i think october 31st we'll, maybe we'll have to look at it again october 31st but well i think no oh, i'm sorry no no remember Kathleen? um i like the idea of the, the extension <laughs> i think that's a that's a good idea whether or not for the master plan, but one idea with that could be, you know, if you could say like they still have every six months. So in the next year and a half, if they do do it, what three times they have to renew or two times, and then the same process, building inspector and all that stuff. I mean, I think Brian you said five or six of these. So I don't think it could be a big burden to do that, but that would help make sure that the structures are still up up to date. And that sort of thing. So if you want to do it every six months, building inspector, go through the process. And then at the end of you know that calendar year, because that would give them then some way to say, no, we're not, this isn't up to code or whatever. That's a good suggestion. Member Corsonage. Um I I like that comment because that's my concern is just letting things go for too long. But I have a question for um, Brian. What are other cities or townships doing in regards to us? I feel like you, you or Steve should be the one in the know, giving us kind of a recommendation based on your professional experience and your, um, you know, mm -hmm. communicating with other townships and other cities to know what they're sure. doing. What is the norm? I, we don't want to put businesses in a bad spot, but I think we should know what other people are doing. Yeah, that's a fair question. And off the top of my head, I know I hear a lot about this and we get our emails from the Michigan Association of Plan and we see a lot of literature on this. I can't off the top of my head give you kind of specifics of neighboring ones that have to time do a little dive and, and see and that'd probably be a helpful way. And I don't know if Steve did that as part of this or there, or Sandra Corhorn, our economic development director, she might have an idea too. So it's off the top of my head, I'm not exactly sure, but it's that, something I, we can try I to do. I feel like that's why, no offense, why we create staff <laughs> to be, professional members of certain societies is to be able to present, bring to us so we're not sitting up here hashing over details of something that I know I am not a professional planner or talking to other townships to know what they're doing. Yes, and I would, I would say that, you know, no one from the DDA is here, no one from businesses are here, and there's no one from the public here on this matter. So I don't think it's a real, uh, 
barn burner <laughs> issue tonight. <laughs> well, that's why I was that's why I was leading towards this. I'd like to hear from staff to hear a, a recommendation. We got some from council to know what their technical pieces are, which sometimes are a little too deep to, to mm -hmm. be asking businesses. But I would like to hear from staff oh. to hear recommendations, what the norm is in our state, what people are doing, so that we're kind of at least have. Some yeah, Sandra basis. should be able to. Tell us a lot of that. Maybe we could ask that she is at the next meeting. And she can tell us what businesses what, want. Yeah, but I, our businesses want as well. And yep. what? Yes. Yep. And by the way, I don't things. think council has or that's where things too deep. Um, no, no. no. Just kidding. <laughs> well, I'm talking I, about how we're talking I, about the nitty gritty. Where right. We, like we want emergency and, stuff if they want to approve it. These are getting all these approvals, which I do think is too much in it. Brian, could we also see if if Sandra could reach out to some of the businesses in the area and get an indication from them of what they feel would be an appropriate time frame mm -hmm. for approving a temporary structure. You know, they, do they think five months and then getting it re-inspected or six months or a year? I, I mean, I'm pretty sure I think they're going to say it's like an infinite amount of time, but, <laughs> but I'd just like to see what, what, what the consensus is from them as far as what's reasonable. Sure. You know, I have a follow-on question, if I could. Yes. Yeah. There's only five or six of these? I believe so. Like, I can see more than five or six driving down 28th Street. Are we just looking the other way on some needs, of these? I think he needs businesses. Right, but, like, if I, only five or six have applied. Is, is that? I I believe so, as far as I, I, I can count. <laughs> I mean, I, I can count more than that, just going through a, one of the problems. You know, and like I, like I said, if someone has a, already an existing patio, I mean, they can maybe put up something there and that's not included in this. This is just when they're using But are we looking, wall. have we been looking the other way because there's been a pandemic? Uh, you know, you get a pass I'd say, this. and this, that's just come up in science too. We've definitely been out so, a lot less with some of that when, type of When thing. is it expected that you're gonna, you know, tighten the road. I'd say we'll probably talk about that pretty soon since all the restrictions have been list, list, lifted pretty recently. So. so that would be good data to have as well uh, when we come back to this, right? Because How many I, maybe? Well, I just, now. are you, like, again, I think I know of more than five or six of these that are, are up. Are, you know, if we're looking the mm -hmm. other way. I, I it, is the, yeah. is the in, intent, Brian, to let these structures remain until the Township Board's current deadline in October? Or would your department be inclined to tell uh, businesses, okay, guys, pandemic's up. You have 45 days to remove the temporary structure. I, I, I don't know how the approvals were written. So I'm, it would be through October 31st. They'd be allowed to. Okay. Okay. The ones, the ones that were approved. Yes. Right. Correct. For the prior ones. That's what I was trying to un understand. Correct. Is yeah. Because the, they're, they're the ones that are. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. I, okay. All right. Uh, anyone else have anything else they'd like to add to this discussion? Who knew that this was going to be such a big topic tonight? Thank you, Member Merlin, for the motion to table and the support, Member Nordyke. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Brian, do you have enough notes uh, for gathering information? I think so. I can go back and check the Minutes. audio too. Yeah, <laughs> check the minutes, but. Yep. Should okay. Be all right. All right. We good. All right. I'm going to move on to Article Nine, which is to review the work plan, which uh, I was going to try and bring up on my computer, but uh, looks like Member Merlin already has his hand up, so I'll let you dive right in. Brian, are you going to get up and speak to this? I was. I think Scott had requested it on the agenda, so I. Didn't have anything prepared to speak to. I, I think I, I am the one that you asked for it in the last meeting. Yeah. I did. I did. No, Just, so my intent here was not necessarily to get into a long discussion about editing the work plan because we might want to talk about something different. Uh, but my intent was I recognize that we have, uh, if you will, a third of the planning commission is different than it was say a year ago. And I thought it would be, a, or maybe I should say since the last time we saw the work plan. And so I, I thought it was a good idea to put it in front of all of us and review it so that everybody could see it. And if people had concerns with it, that we could discuss tweaking it uh, as opposed to 
someone being blindsided at the end of the year and say, why did we work on this? I didn't know about it. So that was that was why I did it. And can I ask you a series of questions? Yes, absolutely. And I, I may not have answers though. Whose work plan is it? Well, I what think... is this work plan of? I mean, it has township stuff, it has DBA stuff on it, it has things that don't presumably apply to the planning commission unless it's in its planning role. We had, if I'm not mistaken, we had come up with these topics back after our joint meetings with the DDA yes. and the ZBA. Does any other people, you, you recall that, Brett, too? Uh, and that it was discussed, I think this was through the surveys that took place, it was where a lot of this came from. And then there was a survey of all of us when we met here pre-pandemic. On, at the tables with the with the DDA, but it was all staff members talking to one another. Not this, no, it was well, I mean, staff staff looking over the feedback. Feedback. If you include us as staff, then yes. I mean, it was but it was talking to the government. It was it was all of us, but there was, and and these topics were prioritized at that and at that session. We assigned them in order of what we wanted, based and all of the topics were. If I maybe Stephanie might even be able to add to this, I don't know. If, no, okay. <laughs> I'm staying out of that one. But but they, uh, if I remember, there was there was a survey, and that's where all of these topics showed up. Citizens. In fact, I think that was the community. Uh, help me out here, you guys. The, the the program through Williams and Works, where they had everybody go to the church and they put pins on the map of what they liked, and then they came here and did the same thing in this room. Uh, I remember putting those pins on a wall. This ain't anything even close to that. But um, putting that aside, whose work plan is it supposed to be? Is it for the planning commission? Is it for the township? The first one is a DDA project. It is. Do we have any oversight of DDA project? We should. And in with any sane person, with that project as number one, having been at the hearing where the board did not, not approve it. There were parking concerns, there were traffic concerns, there were um, the kind of uses that would be made by people of skate parks and whatnot. It was a bloodbath. That was the order I saw, and I was really when after we after we ordered it. That was the order that I remember seeing the gathering place as number one, and I thought to myself, "How was that possible?" But that's where it was, so I, I didn't see the votes. <laughs> it was upside down. Well, I figured it, I messed up, and you know, it's one of those deals where you you say uh, one is your favorite and five is your least favorite, or five is your favorite and one is your least favorite, and I just ordered them incorrectly. But so I was odd man out, but. but in, I, interestingly, in our budgets, the gathering place still has 200 and some odd thousand dollars, I think, budgeted for this year to do revisions to this plan. So they may still be working on it. All I, yeah, yeah. We, we have nothing, to, that's a DDA project, and that is not something we're dealing with, but it's something that the community development department, if you will, is so probably is dealing with. The community development department work plan. Could be. I don't. I, Brian, do you look at this work plan and, and prioritize your your week or month? I'm typically looking at our what's coming on to our meetings to just, just do wondering. things. But okay. we do. I think take a look at this, or you know, Steve takes a look at this, and then kind of when there's time, so like you chip away at some of these but the no, items that came up. But that's another question on the website. That's not the community development department, or is this just your tweak to the website you want to? Which is that number two. What was the question? I mean, the website isn't under the control of the community development department. No, but they can make recommendations to tweak the website. For tweaking, if they're tweaking. Right, and I mm -hmm. think the idea is that they want people to be able to provide more communication. Well, we just did a redo of our website. What would be anyone's reaction to that? Does it sell Cascade? I think the website works better than the old one when it's working. There have been several times when it's been down, but I think they've 
in recent, recently, I haven't had experience problems with it, but initially when it first rolled out, there were definitely some uh, hiccups there. I just, I have normal problems with it late at night when it just won't load for me, particularly the night before board meetings. Um, interestingly enough, but I'm not suggesting any conspiracy here. I'm just Please don't. being cynical. Um, the, a couple of other things that just, I mean, if, if we were looking at it from a community perspective, you'd want to have PFAS on it. You'd want to have the town. I believe that's on here. The PFAS is on here. There's four two, or five. two line items on there for PFAS. Yep. But it's not PFAS focused in the way it would be now. So it's not really in the sense that we know sewer isn't going to be included. It's cost prohibitive. We know we're not getting into potential projects with the airport. I don't think project's the word that would be used right now. Well, in 2019, when this was developed, I think we had a whole different- No, but this says 2020 status and 2021 date on the report. So right. this was the 2019 list. And that was what was agreed upon in 2019. That would make me feel much more comfortable because it would be and simply I, a use of dated and irrelevant information. Well, and I, I believe it says at the top here, at the top of the memo, that these this was like items that had been identified through the joint meetings we had in 2019. Yeah. I so this is this list is from 2019. Is a comprehensive list for our 2021 work plan. Right. And sitting on the top of that is outdoor gathering place. Right. And then it shows the status of it at the end of 2020, I believe. Right. So it speaks up with mixed messages. I think what it's getting at maybe is that we don't really have a 2021 work plan. We're working off of the 2020 work plan. Which was developed in 2019. So perhaps the recommendation is to develop a new work plan. Yeah, I would- Member Norbuck, what do you have to add? We are currently developing a line of questions for our new strategic plan to go out, which I think we should go off. Instead of, this, agree. instead of this two-year-old stuff that was never completed. Let's listen to the people today and do our 2021 work plan. I think that's, that's fine. Again, I just wanted everybody to see what was out there. Thank and you. I think we should keep this in mind when we move forward, but obviously look towards what the new data tells us. Get on arrival. And with that, we, could is a great room? segue could into the room by burning the space. No. <laughs> I think the temperature in here is just fine. Take it out on the rail service. Uh, okay, then we have a member list. Did everybody? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm way off here. Uh, Area like yes, okay, old business. Now we have a barrier at the library property line. Uh, member, uh, or I'm sorry, <laughs> Blair Hildebrand, would you like to uh, address this one? I just got a chance to talk to Manager Swayze just briefly today, and he mentioned that he did bring that up with the library here if they had concerns um, with anything over there, since they do have programs and children out there, and they mentioned that they didn't have a concern um, with or felt the need to have a barrier or anything like that over there. So he shared that opinion that he didn't. If there was a need to have a barrier there at this time. And it's our property, not the library's property. That's correct. So the child that falls off of it will be our liability, not the library's. I would imagine so. So we got the library's input. They've never seen a curious seven year old. Member Maxley? That still seems slow. They filled it in, but it's still a 45, 45 degree slope out there. Okay. In but if you fall, you aren't stopping until you hit the bottom. Okay. And has the bottom got all the construction metals that were there a few weeks ago? No, it's pretty well cleared up. Really nice pool. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> all the ground. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. <laughs> uh, okay. Sorry, I saw the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> no, you gotta, you know, it's getting late. It's gonna throw some humor in there. Uh, okay, so what you're saying is that. 
the area is not a steep drop anymore. It's just, a, or it's not a, a cliff anymore. It's a, it's, a, it's a hill. It's a steep hill, 45 steep hill. degrees. Very okay. steep. I, I consider it a dip. It's a good sledding hill. A dangerous situation. Sledding okay, you do consider it a da dangerous hill. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, that's uh, that's the report. Yesterday. Okay, that's that's the report on that as of right now. So that right now, we're not doing anything about it because someone who has who would be partially liable, presumably because it's their program. Um, Member Merlin, if I could, the decision was made by Township Manager Swayze. So he certainly got input from the library, but Manager Swayze is who made this decision. Made this decision to do what? No. That there would not be safety barriers put up at the retaining wall. At the retaining wall, the, 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 the edge of the property. It's just dirt there, Stephanie. There's no wall there. Okay. But you're talking unit four with the one near the library only. I just want to make sure you understand. Staff went to Manager Swayze with the concern. Manager Swayze spoke to the library, and the decision was given to staff that we will not be putting up a barrier at this time. Oh, so I would encourage any further questions or direction to be directed to Manager Swayze, just because staff doesn't have that power. Okay. And all we asked for before was an orange cone. Caution tape. Or a caution tape, yes. And Manager Swayze said. No. I would tell Manager Swayze it is still at least I haven't seen it most more recently, but if it says if it remains a dangerous hill to slide down on, um, I'm less concerned than I was when it was a cliff, but I'm still. Well, I think I'm going to recommend maybe that. We take a look at it, and if we have a concern still, we can pressure staff again on it, or manager right, Swayze. Manager Swayze yeah. if, if if we if we feel so inclined. Yes, Member Moxley. I have two concerns. Uh, number one, there's a line of trees at the top of the hill that you may suddenly walk out from those trees and suddenly find yourself rolling down the hill and not stop until you hit the bottom because of the steepness. So maybe it's not a cliff. You, you won't, you know. Sure. He's seriously hurt, perhaps, but uh, you will you will roll down that hill, and I I think we need some sort of barriers with orange tape along the top of that thing. I I was surprised that they hadn't put in a more gradual slope in that area when I saw it. I wonder if their current grade is in compliance with the grading plan for that property. Which doesn't show. I mean, I've seen the the round hill plan, and it seemed a more gradual. Unit three presumably has a less yes dangerous yes. fall. It's also a little lower. It's so. only four that's the real problem. Well, we can bring it up at the next meeting. Yeah, someone wants to bring it up, they can. I, I just we we asked for caution tape, and it was denied, and that's where we're at. So, if that's, someone and gets, but if someone gets hurt for one of our spending two and a half bucks on caution tape, that's not going to be well. But we also we also have to add though that it appears the developer may have heard our discussion and started to fill the area in a little yeah. bit. But maybe not. maybe more will be done. We we'll have yet to see, but let's okay. let's see where that leads to. Um, okay, moving right along, we had a member list uh, go out. I believe Cassie sent that out. No, you saw it. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen that. I can resend one. Sent her a message asking for it. I can, <laughs> oh. I can send one you tomorrow if that. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I could be. Uh, I wonder if I was supposed to. Uh, I can send one out tomorrow, address. Scott. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. It doesn't have to be tomorrow, but okay, yeah, the one I have is from February. 
16th. So that's a little. Uh, they're being made. They're being made, but you have to submit a photo, and I have not done that yet. I have not done that. Yeah, yeah. The list I have is out of date. So I I was gonna give it a good picture of me taken somewhere. Uh, funny, like in front of the Ada Township sign, but I, <laughs> <laughs> I decided against it. So uh, I'll get that taken care of. But yeah, <clears throat> yes. If any planning commission member needs help getting a photo, either Katie with Human Resources or myself, we're happy to to meet you and to take a headshot if that's needed. Who's the better photographer? Well, I would say me. <laughs> okay. Covered right. Golden wall, yeah. What, about a week ago or so? Or is there some place to pick up? Or she was going to try to have all of them distributed at the same time. So it's our fault you don't have it because we have yeah. it. You can blame me. Me too. I'm, I'm assuming they'll be distributed at a meeting. Not so much. Okay. Maybe the next meeting. <laughs> Okay, moving right along. Uh, next item is rules of conduct. Uh, and we had discussed this a bit, and then we were presented some material this evening. Uh, we have a large packet. We were, and, and Member Merlin worked on it, and he, he presented it to me uh, last week sometime, and then I, I stumbled and tripped, and you didn't get it. So what we decided to do is we decided to distribute it tonight as an introduction, and then he will uh, highlight some things, and then that way we can have some time to take it home, read through it, make comments on it, come back and discuss it a little bit more in totality after we've digested it. So that's kind of the idea here. Uh, Member Merlin, would you wish to, yeah. to talk about what, you, what you've conceived here? Okay. Um, what this does is address more of the policy issues surrounding what our rules of conduct should be. Um, and then allow the input of this group at our next meeting or whenever we choose to bring it back up when they have read through it and thought about these issues themselves, we can get a sense of the commission as to where they stand on these things, give that to our town council and have them come up with a draft. Um, at least a draft of rules of conduct that would be consistent with what we have led them to believe is our generalized view and what they view as necessarily legal as well. And that's the first question is, are these rules of conduct only for legal compliance with the Open Meeting Act, for example, or are they also for interests of transparency? Are there for conflicts of interest that are beyond those which are legal conflicts of interest under Michigan law um, into, for example, appearances of impropriety? Um, and does anybody know whether Cascade has some general ethical principles of behavior. I do not. Staff. I didn't hear that. No manual. Does your personal manual have ethical rules of behavior? I couldn't tell you that off the top of my head. She hasn't read it lately. Um, okay, but that may be something to look at in terms of whether if we do, we would want ours to be consistent with Cascades uh, as a township or to be suggestive to Cascade that they may want to do something more. I would expect if they have ethical principles, they're reasonably general and we just don't want to vary too far from them. Now, and let's go to the first policy question. And so the first question is, how many of those do you think these rules should apply to? Second starts into the second subject is policy questions. And the first one is, let's posit a continuum of risk aversion. And we're doing that in the context of willingness to assume risk. Um, we know that in the law, about 20% of the answers are clearly yes, 20% are clearly no, 
and 6% are full of a lot of gray area and interpretation. That's why they pay lawyers all the money they do. Um, and that's why lawyers make sure they're full of interpretation. Um, but in this, and I posited a continuum of let's say one to five, where for example, tonight, taking me as an example, um, rather than the retired executive in there who still has a financial interest in one of the hypotheticals I have, I recuse myself from the discussion of timber bluffs because I had a long-term business relationship with the owner, at least according to the documents in here I found on the second reading, the owner of that property. Um, and no financial relationships at all with them currently, nothing else, but it just would have potentially have created the appearance of impropriety. That would be on the, I am trying to be um, as free of any even risk of an appearance of impropriety. That would put me on the one scale on this. It, it would, and can I hop in here a second? And I don't wanna consume the whole night talking about this, but I do wanna mention that uh, while well, tonight recruiting yourself was fine, no issues there. But I can remember a time personally when I was sitting in the room and as an applicant and had a uh, something in front of, and I don't remember what board it was, the Township Board, Planning Commission or ZBA, but uh, there was a majority of that committee that tried to recuse themselves because they were all somewhat related to what it was that uh, the topic that we were discussing. And the concern became that there was no longer a quorum. And so the township attorneys basically chimed in and said, look, because you're not, you're not currently engaged, you do not need to recuse yourself or just because you're a member of an organization does not mean that you have to recruit yourself from, from the meeting. And so they were able to still conduct business. But, but I, could see, I, I guess I wanna be cautious because if we, if we create the hypothetical argument and then all of a sudden something happens where there's a, a number of us included, it, it, you know, sometimes it's good for us to have somebody with some firsthand experience. Well, all I would say is that they may have been sending you a message, Scott. Um, <laughs> it was a long time ago, so I don't know. But, very well. Um, <laughs> the, um, I can see that need for an exception. And I just, from my personal standard, given the preeminence of those two families um, mm -hmm. in oh, I'm not just I'm not disagreeing for what you're saying. I'm just throwing out the hypothetical I that- agree. There has to be a fine line where you, Agreed you know. Entirely, and there has to be an override. Right. To deal with that, the issue you raised. Right. Um, and I'm not suggesting that one is where we ought to be. That's just a personal preference of mine. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's necessarily where we should be. Um, the question is, on along that continuum, do we push toward with that which is illegal and step back from it a bit? which would be, let's say, we're not gonna go illegal. So five would be, you get as close to the, what clearly is illegal, but not quite there. And are you, we willing to be on that side of it? Which would say, if I did have a business relationship with the applicant in that, if that applicant, if the applicant was sitting right there and I had a business relationship with that person, I would have to recuse myself, I think. Yeah, if I had a current customer that came in front of us with a request, I would recuse, I would recuse myself. If it's, if it's a, uh, you know, somebody's driveway I snow plowed last winter and they're here about a pole barn application, I'm, I'm not going to recuse myself because that, that agreement, right. that term ended, right. uh, albeit recently, but it's, it's clearly unrelated and I see no, Right. financial gain in any way right. so I, I think that you know but I, I but I usually I, I usually bring that type of a thing to everyone's attention 
and say, hey, just so you know, I've worked with this person in the past. If someone up here felt uncomfortable, I would And that could up. be, for example, one of the two, threes, and fours and just write it out that that's where you would be. Disclose it. Disclose it and let the commission know about it if they're... Right. Now, Article if, 4. We now have that on the agenda as Article 4. Yes, and I would have disclosed it in Article 4 because you're already Article 7 before <laughs> I got here. Um, I think that's a, <laughs> that's a problem that you have to fix, not me. <laughs> I know. I know. But don't call me at 6.30. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Um, I think it was 6.18. It was 6.18, but we talked until <laughs> after 6.30. Yeah. But anyway, um, so that's just where on that sort of continuum do you want to, do you want to press closer to safety or are you willing to be more flexible and occasionally take common sense, practical, but clearly not illegal actions, but you're, for example, relying on an interpretation that might not be the majority interpretation of something. I might go there because it's the practical common sense thing to do. When I have practiced before regulatory bodies in my practice of law, I have always wanted to be in a position that I could with a straight face defend that which I had done, um, a standard to which virtually no politician today adheres. Um, but in Japan, for example, we had codes of conduct that said, would you be comfortable having your mother read about what you did in tomorrow's newspaper on the front page? And amazingly, that worked very well in Japan. Except for Carl Goshen. But he wasn't Japanese. No, no, he was not. And he fought a long battle. I knew his general, I knew the general con, general counsel of uh, that. But anyway. I, I have a question, sorry. Yes. With this. Yes. My just everybody else in the room, which is fine. I thought that we were going to come up with just questions related to the rules of conduct that were being presented to council to put together our rules of conduct. And I, and no offense, but I feel like this is like a questionnaire, and I'm not sure if I'm supposed to answer this or if this is how this I, is going. Well, to I had proposed. I had proposed that at the next meeting that we discussed this. No one had to disclose what their answers to any of these were, but it got people thinking because embedded in the rules of conduct today are things clearly not legally required, but they're based on policy determination that Mr. Peterson or whomever that is so scared apparently of the OMA that he even restricts oral communication between members. Right, but I feel like I thought we were trying to get together some questions for council for them to put together new rules of conduct. Member, of course, you're exactly right. And I think that Member Merlin simply put this together as an attempt to spawn questions in your mind to be asked okay. related right. to the rules of conduct. All this is, is, is a, all this is, is, a, is a document for you to go through and, and throw hypothetical answers on and gets you thinking about what you might want to ask of legal counsel. That's, that that's essentially sense. what this is. Okay. Right. And it makes sense for the council to know that in answering, we know what the current rules of conduct are in the sense that I can assure you that they go well beyond what the OMA required. Um, and they're based on what seems to be a very close close reading of anything even approaching the OMA compliance. Right. But that's why we have so, to And that's a policy decision that was made. And these are the same kind of policy questions that would be asked. But they, again, just get your thoughts flowing for you then to ask particular questions or to say, we're not as risk averse as our current rules would seem to indicate. Or, for example, um, are we as tolerant of potential conflicts? Um, you could have direct conflicts. You could have the example given here on the um, 
mean, I clearly tonight was very hesitant to get even to a appearance of impropriety on that conflict issue. But the current rules, the current standards, our rules of conduct would have us be go almost beyond that. We can't, oh, actually, excuse me, on conflicts, they wouldn't. On communication, communication they, they do. Correct. Um, on conflicts, they would not, because let's assume that I was being asked to take a position on the board, and I knew that my former employer was just getting into a significant problem or could get into a significant problem with the township. There was a major dispute. Should I even accept that position? Nothing before the planning commission that was going to be expected. Should I get in that position or should I not? Should I have to disclose that or should I not? If, and some would say that absent an actual direct conflict, you don't even need to disclose it. I personally think that's the wrong answer because I think there is the concept of an appearance of impropriety to the citizen but that's just my opinion. And again, that's where you have to come to your own judgments. And that's where we tell, we say to Mr. Homier, here on these sort of continuums are where we probably generally would end up. And then here are all the specific questions that then needs to, in terms of rules. And there's some things that are in here particularly, um, what happens under our current rules if your adult child is a controlling member of an entity that comes before the board? You have nothing to do with his business at all. Is that a conflict? Well, the optics of it would be. Right. Well, and I think that that's what we're asking them to put together, kind of. But that's what we're suggesting. How far does that go? Well, I think that they just need to put together some sort of structure for us. And then if questions ever do come up, then we ask specific questions regarding them. I think this is directionally, hey, where do we want to live on this edge? Build your guidelines to that. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's all that this is doing. Yeah. And it happens in a number of ways. I don't think, Wendy, we can say, just build us a structure. And then if they don't include your adult son, um, and we say, oh, it's not a conflict, no problem um, in our rules, therefore we're gonna follow that. It still looks pretty bad. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure, that's why they need to know from our perspective, how much of an appearance of impropriety, how worried are we about that or not? These are not cookie cutter. If, can I just throw this out? I mean, if, if we were sitting here and uh, it came out that hypothetically, uh, the applicant had a son of one of the members on the planning commission uh, as an employee, uh, I would think that if that was brought to our attention by someone other than the member of, of the committee, that if that member didn't recuse themselves at that moment, we as a committee could That's tell not, them to step outside. Right, and if it didn't happen during that time, I think there needs to be some kind of record afterwards where and I think that that's part of being adults and sitting on this is right that we need to in my opinion in my previous lives I've signed statements yearly stating what conflict of interest vaguely sometimes detailed pretty deep some of them are lengthy long mm -hmm. forms that you have to sign to say I agree to this is what conflict of interest means it's detailed it's long but then at every meeting, when somebody says that, I know what I need to speak up and what I don't. And if I didn't do that, then I would be held to that at some point. And that is actually, from a securities law perspective, very typical mm -hmm. as well, where you'd have 
You know precisely what family is. You mm -hmm. know precisely exactly. what a conflict is. It's set forth in the rules of the Securities and Exchange Commission. Mm -hmm. The municipal law isn't, I mean, Mike Comier would have great problems with some of this because it's just too detailed for municipalities because municipalities can do all sorts of things um, that they can commit securities fraud. Municipalities can, in essence, by disclosing, for example, in a millage approval, certain facts and not disclosing all the facts, making that which they disclose somewhat misleading or materially misleading. And after it's been approved, no 30 days pass, no problem. So I, I think what we need to do is read this through and we'll have this on the next agenda and we can give it some more time then and figure out uh, if we're ready to have a conversation with Township Legal Council. Yes, and we could have the Township Legal Council here for the next meeting if we wanted to as well. Or I am happy, and I don't view this as deliberation, to answer any factual question as to what I was attempting to get at in a particular question or concern. But some of these things probably shouldn't be in a rules of conduct in any event. Okay. So I think they're interesting for us to raise under the strategic plan and lots right. of other contexts I, as well. Again, I, I took this as this is just a document to get you thinking to come right. up with good questions. And so I think we can read through it and, and talk about this. And the only caveat to that is the one Chris made earlier. I think that's exactly right, except that it would be good to give Mike a little bit of guidance as to where we are sort of on a couple of different continuums. Okay. Well, let's think about that. Think about where you are on those continuums and what issues you want to bring up, and we'll address that the next at the next one. Uh, I want to keep. No. Not quite yet. Quite yet. We have. Uh, let's see those rules of conduct. Article twelve. Any other business? Member Nord, Nordhook, you have your hand up, waving around pretty. I just want to bring up the strategic plan again and uh, let everybody know that this is not going to be like the last time. It's going to be very detailed and labor intensive. Planning board is going to be heavily involved in it. Um, planning the commission. Planning commission will be heavily involved in the strategic planning process. Uh, so. Mr. Merlin has uh, volunteered to write a nice little skit about how that can all go. So just putting you all on notice, pack your lunch. So it's gonna get it's gonna get lengthy and we're gonna do a great job getting this uh, township uh, in a strategic plan that's gonna work for us. Well, let me mention a couple of things. And the key you saw in the agenda for the Board of Trustees meeting, if you look, the last page has sort of a standalone resolution that speaks generically of this process. And the reason it was there is largely as a placeholder. Um, Supervisor Lesperins has heard from a couple of people and is sending out a note that why she put it in there. And it was because of the awkward timing between our meeting and their meeting, the two days apart. Um, and something we may want to consider at the calendaring of meetings next year. Um, to switch weeks or whatever, I don't know. But the thought is that this creates the most interesting and really exciting opportunity to really build something we haven't had for, I suspect, a number of years here in this township, which is real alignment between the citizens and the government the staff and the board of trustees and the various committees and commissions. Hannah had suggested a strategic plan that rolls up all of the other planning documents into almost a new master plan and or comprehensive plan. Good idea. But our last one has largely sat is now a dusty ornament 
or on a shelf somewhere. If we look at our last strategic plan and looked at the zoning ordinances that we were supposed to change, none of them have been done. Um, because, and this is the other good thing about the McKenna proposal, is it leads down to actionable items. And so the goal here is to front load the process and really go out and get the input of the citizens today and get all of the citizens. Go to assisted living centers and sit down and talk with them and have surveys for them to fill out and look at every project that's on the township's drawing boards and have a price tag attached to it and say, do you think this is valuable? Do you think this is you know, high priority, it's a good project if we have the money, or it's not worth the money you intend to spend on it. I personally put median strips in Charlevoix Road on the last category, having driven over some in the past. Um, but putting that aside, um, and the damage to the underside of my car, um, the, so we have, Disclosure, for example, of where we are from a millage perspective. Are we, if you were to ask people on around this, the nine of us, what would you say we are in terms of our millage? I'm, are we high millage or lower millage among townships in Kent County? Remember, Merlin, is, are, are you, are you I, I guess I'm, I'm getting lost about millages and related to your, is this related to, you, to the document that you emailed, emailed out to everyone today? Yes. A strategic plan letter to the township board? Yes, because what I'm presuming is when we go to the citizenry to get their input, we'll fully inform them and accurately inform them and fairly inform them of what they're being asked to prioritize and what they're being asked to say are their two or three priority projects or two or three priority concerns. I want them to look at the projects that we have on our drawing board. Well, I, I, I understand, but I don't think we're, uh, I, I feel like maybe we're getting a little ahead of ourselves with respect to that. And I'm- Well, the reason I raised the millage question was because in the last document that went out that seemed to sell Cascade, it showed that we were quite low millage was the message it was sending. We are actually one of the two or three highest millage townships in the county of Kent. Right. Which, right. Which includes school taxes and non-school taxes. It doesn't talk about that in the proposed resolution that you sent out today, does it? No, it talks about in form. Right. So, so in I, the memo that went with it. That's in the memo. Oh, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. I mean, and so that's why the notion is that the citizenry does not feel, in my estimation, talking to the citizens in the PFAS area or the citizens uh, who each have a different right, whether it's in Timber Bluffs now, which I never even knew existed until this weekend. The citizens don't believe we're always as transparent as we should be. Okay. They have come to meetings and have heard, we can't do anything about the Valley Warehouse liquor license. Not knowing that two weeks before, or the two meetings before, the Board of Trustees had actually approved a redevelopment liquor license, which had an almost an implicit veto right in it. So we could have done something then, but we couldn't when they were speaking at that point, because we don't go out and push communications out to our citizens. We keep saying, go to the website. So what I'm trying to do in this proposal is transfer the culture to one where we as a government market our township to our own citizens and prove we are trustworthy and that they can in fact both know that we listen to them, we heard what their priorities were and what they thought of what our priorities were. And three, we then create actionable plans from every different group within the 
government, I mean, the Parks Committee and the Planning Commission and whomever else, the DDA, and that then when they see on a whiteboard on our website, this is the actionable item that has to be completed by date X, that's the expected date, mm -hmm. at X cost, that's the expected cost, and X is the staff member responsible for it. Okay. So there's accountability I built into that. That will change the culture around here pretty fast. I hear what you're saying. I guess my question is, did the members of the Planning Commission, has everyone had an opportunity to read the uh, strategic plan letter, the township board that member Merlin drafted and the attached resol you know, the resolution portion of it? it yes, it is. It came out twice today. Scott sent it out and I did get your copy, Scott. Okay. That's from 645. And then when we talked, when I hadn't found it or seen it, that, would be and when I that was more passwords. like noon or 1130. And I, so I sent it out as you and I talked about a second time. Okay. Did, did it, did it, has anybody not read it? I scanned it. Scanned it. Okay. All right. Do we, I guess, in, in, but I'd like keeping in mind the time of the evening, I don't want to go into a long, uh, uh, discussion about things that we hope this proposal will bring. I want to focus specifically on this letter. And, and resolution and getting that done, if that's what we want to do. If it's not, then fine. But I think, the, I think what you were getting at initially uh, is that I, I think you were hinting that Supervisor Les Prince wanted this and that's why she has it on the board agenda. She'd like us to nudge the board along. Is that, that's what I think I'm getting from the ends of the table. But I haven't heard anything specifically from Supervisor Les Prince that she'd like Pretty us fair. to put some pressure on the board. So I'm. Well, we have gone to the board, or Timmy has twice, with comments about our willingness and desire to be more involved in the planning function. That's the bag of wrenches. That's the bag of wrenches. Okay. And that it is, in fact, our statutory and regulatory under our zoning ordinance. Right. First responsibility. So we were getting, there was more excitement, which can be expressed to the Board of Trustees. Supervisor Lesperance has had a desire to get the strategic planning process going properly. Mm -hmm. The one that was requested in the RFP that the board approved mm -hmm. was basically a staff and board strategic plan. That's, okay. And that the board would lead that effort and would supervise McKenna using the staff. And we heard last week from, or last meeting from Steve that he hadn't heard about it before. And I think- So essentially- The manager, Bass, you hadn't heard much about it either. Is that correct? I guess I would ask you to restate the question. Member Merlin, I, I'm not sure what you're asking me. Well, the last meeting, I think you said you had not heard much about the strategic planning process. I, as a staff member, have not yet been consulted or involved in the strategic planning process, correct? So, in Ben's hands right now. Correct. Um, so, 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 what this does is it says we'll let you get more involved, but it's still going to be under the control of the Board of Trustees. Mm -hmm. And it lets us get our foot in the door with our taking more of an more interaction with the public. More interaction with the public and then more interaction with the board. Because just like a comprehensive plan or a master plan, sure. it comes through here and has to be approved here first before it goes to the board. I, I understand what you're uh, what you're trying to do. So do we, does anybody else have anything to add about this, about this proposed letter? And I, I would just like to, to start off by saying, I'm sorry you didn't get it sooner. I, but the goal was for you to have it on Thursday or Friday and that didn't pan out and I, I apologize. But uh, Member Nordyke. I, I think it's well written. Um, 
two typos. Um, I think that uh, I got vision was one of them at the end. I got uh, that one. Yep. Um, I think that uh, I don't. I don't even necessarily see anything controversial in this. This is so. I, I, you know, I I would recommend that that we adopt and send it on its way to the the township. I don't know if anybody read it and was um, uh, to the board. I don't think did anybody read it and say, "Oh my." No, I thought it was a little more detailed than than I would have made it. But I think that that's. I think it's fine. I I, I have I have no objections. I think I I. Yeah, the one comment I would make and one of the reasons it's a little more detailed is that in some interactions with the board, this has been a this has been something they're really sort of in control of and they want to put some limits around the process. Mm -hmm. And we haven't been involved really in the planning process nope. here too for. So it's appropriate that they do. Okay. Member Maxley. I, I read it. Uh, I, I think it's a great document. Uh, I, and I appreciate uh, what uh, uh, Mr. Merlin has done here. Uh, question I have on page one, what is CIP halfway down? Capital Improvement Plan. Okay. My apologies. Because I, I didn't see it uh, listed anywhere else. Um, page three. You start in a parentheses, including appointed citizens committees. If you need to add the in parentheses on that, it's about halfway down page three. Yep, thank you. I would strike out your last line on that same paragraph, though perhaps not as many median strips on Charlevoix Road. Oh, you need a little humor in all of these oh, things. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I had. Otherwise, I think it's a great document. All right. Now, I do think that it's good to uh, identify the CIP uh, there because not everybody's going to read that, although I would hope the board would know, but not everybody's going to pick up the... Uh, I will do that yeah, as well. Yeah, that would be helpful. Uh, any other thoughts, comments on here? Can I make a motion? Please do. Uh, make a motion that uh, we adopt this with removing the Charlevoix median strips, uh, fixing the vision uh, typo at the end, and uh, defining it. the CIP uh, acronym. Closing the parentheses. Yeah. Closing, parentheses. Closing the parentheses. And, uh, Did someone else have another typo that I missed? No. You just I just gave you the vision. The parentheses were my two. Oh, I, I, I concur with Ralph on the well, I appreciate the humor. Um, I don't know that it will. You haven't experienced that humor. I, I feel like I have tonight, and I've tried to send some your way. So yes. <laughs> no, but I support the motion. Experience. Yes. Support the motion. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So we it's been moved to uh, to approve this letter and resolution resolution, and it's been seconded by Member Maxley. Member Rappin, you have a discussion you like to Having not had time to read this myself, is, can I abstain? Do I refuse? What's the, I guess, the correct? We've never had an, uh, an abstaining vote before. I'm trying to think. But I don't feel like I can take an action. I don't, I'm I don't trying support to think of, I, would, I would suggest you simply abstain. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The, I want to note that in a minute, so that I'm okay. abstaining yeah. and not voting for it. If it wasn't so tight on the calendar, too, I wouldn't be making I understand. I just. Yeah. I don't feel like I can disclose I didn't read it and then vote for or against it. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Okay. I think that's wise. Uh, all right. Anybody else have any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Member Rappin has abstained. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, we will move on to additional other, any other business and try to keep it as brief as possible. Member Moxley. Uh, yesterday I was out at the uh, Round Hill development, uh, taking some photographs, uh, making sure I'm up to speed on exactly how things have uh, turned out out there. And I was very concerned about the retaining wall that has been uh, put in by the developer there. It's approximately 18 feet high at the center. It's virtually a straight vertical retaining wall. 
It's beautiful, it's well done. Um, I'm very concerned about the fact that uh, if somebody should happen to stumble off this thing, uh, when they hit the ground down below, 18 feet below, there's boulders down there. They will be badly hurt if not killed. Uh, I, um, not only that, but there's a probably an eight foot slope from the cul-de-sac down to the retaining wall top. And if somebody, a kid got running down that hill and didn't stop, they could go right off and drop over the edge. Uh, I'm very concerned about this. And I, uh, I was so concerned that I went over and talked to uh, Brian Wilson, uh, at the building department today about, uh, is there any kind of uh, anything in the code that could require a, uh, some sort of guard at the top of that wall? This really affects units five and six on Round Hill on the east side and the southeast side. Right. That's where the majority of it is, where it's that tall. One of those units, the back of one of those units is not far from that retaining wall. Yeah. I mean, with their kids were grandkids were playing in their backyard. Yeah. So I, um, I I discussed this with Brian. He said, really, the 2015 residential building code that we follow here in the township does not uh, make provision for putting some sort of guardrail. They call it a guard at the top of retaining walls unless there's a sidewalk right next to it, or a driveway, or a landing, or a stairway of some sort right there. If it's nothing but turf, you don't have to do anything. If the sidewalk, if there's a sidewalk that's three feet away from it, you don't have to do anything. I find that uh, pretty amazing, and I think it's asking for trouble. All you need is to have some kid or somebody's grandkid go down there if they're not familiar with what that wall is and how big it is, they fall over that thing, go head first, you're dead. Or someone's grandfather. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm just really concerned about it. And I, I brought this up uh, with Scott Reese earlier. And uh, he, he drafted, uh, I think, a, a, a great letter that we ought to send over to Brian Wilson at the building department asking for future action to address this issue. Well, we can't say, you know, it's a code violation at this point. I think we should have some kind of restriction that says if you want a building permit for those two units, five and six, you ought to have a fence there or yes. some sort of barrier that's going to stop those people from possibly going over in that thing. And I'd like to take a minute and read that, what uh, Scott has put together, because I think it's, it's well done. Okay. Here's what it says. This will only take it's 30 really seconds. Long. Cascade Charter Township Planning Commission recognizes the inherent danger of a very tall retaining wall it was built as part of the PUD Round Hill. Planning Commission understands the current wall meets all township ordinances and state building codes. While the Planning Commission required the wall to be built, it did not require any type of barrier fence or landscaping to warn or prevent people, animals, or construction workers about this significant drop that will be very close to the backs of future homes. We believe there is a risk from falling off this ledge. Planning Commission asks the building department to strongly consider a permanent fence or barrier be installed in any areas of excessive wall height on lots that request building permits in the future. Planning Commission will likely take action on this topic if there are any amendments made to the PUD in the future. In the meantime, we appreciate the building department taking any precautions to make sure that not only the construction workers on site, but other owners and visitors to these sites will be safe. Member Merlin? I think that's a wonderful letter. 
I think the one thing that we you might consider adding is that we will also take a look at this from a long-term perspective or something. It's not just on this PUD. I would like to see our overall zoning ordinance address should, this issue. Should we ask the building department if they have any opinions on having us that would be great. address this in a... Um, so that we continue to yeah, yeah. move forward and consider this. I think, I find it incomprehensible that the Michigan built in code would state what it does. And the other risk Ralph, that I think may arise on that one is you could also trip off that ledge by catching your toes on the one side of that block. You go ahead first. And go ahead first now. Definitely be dead. But so I think as long as we have in it the concept of getting input or that we are still considering the issue on a longer term, mm -hmm. we don't have to be limited to what the Michigan building or whatever codes are. Okay. Uh, and I do you want to do this as a motion? I'll make a motion that we accept that letter with an addition to be written by Scott that indicates that we are- I'm here by staff. <laughs> <laughs> I can write it, I can write it. Um, that <laughs> indicate that we are looking at this on a longer term basis or on a, on a township wide basis. Isn't, isn't that what the sentence covers? I think it's specific to Round Hill, is it not? Specific. That are, what'd you say? You didn't want to? Um, I, I can clean up the language a little, so I think it will work where we're going. And then if you guys want, I can bring this back to you at the next meeting or I can- Let it rip. Because it's too big a risk, right? I think it is a huge risk. Okay. Even if it ends up being two things, if this goes and then it's something separate talking about the future, however you want to do it, I think that this as it stands needs to go now. And who do you want me to send it to? Brian Wilson at the uh, building department. Should I copy anyone else on that email? I'd copy the supervisor on it too. Well, and who is Brian's boss? Is that Steve? <laughs> Brian, it might be that your mic is pointing straight up, so it's getting some of the audience. Thank you. I think it's just telling us to adjourn. Or blame the staff. <laughs> blame the staff? What? <laughs> well, I used to run sound I back. Said, I about, he must but, have been in a band. <laughs> wasn't in a band. It was for church. I think uh, I think member Nordyke knows where I'm going with this because yeah. I think he took over after I left. Uh, but we used to have you know crayons and markers and low technology Small stuff. Now you stuff. have some. Now you have some real technology, yeah. but. Okay, uh, fair enough. I think I know what I need to do there. If I can get that back from you, I'll tweak it. I'll send that out and uh, we'll go from there. And I thank you, Ralph, for going out and looking at that site again. I'll email it out to you guys maybe 24 hours before I send it just to <laughs> okay. Um, I would, at this point, is there any other business? Move to adjourn. Support. It's been moved by Member Merlin, uh, supported by Member Katzman to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Raised. Okay. Brian.